But there's one question that comes up time after time is, is Bricks Builder ready to use on production sites? Well, how about we find out just how ready it is in this video? I set myself a little challenge to see if it's possible to build a fairly simple, at least for now, listing website using Bricks for the design and search and filter pro for the, well, you know, searching and filtering. I break things down into four key parts. Setting up the basic post type, building the archive listing page, building the single post template, and finally adding searching and filtering to our design. So let's take a really, really quick look at the type of thing we're going to be creating. This is the listing section. As you can see, we've got a search and some filters down the left hand side. We can click, we can filter things out based upon the type of job that they are and so on. If we take a look there, we've also got the ability to click and take a look at the job itself. We can get some more details. I say don't take any notes of the design aspect of this. It's more just function over anything to do with design. And if we take a look at the listings, you can see we've got some custom metadata, including the salary, the contract duration, who the employer is, those kinds of things. Let's get stuck in and see how far we can get with bricks and dynamic listings. So for this part, let's take ACF and custom post type UI and create a really simple post type and use that as the basis of our listing. Now it is worth noting that in the most current version of Bricks, which is 1.3 at the time of recording this video, we can't really work with some of the more advanced ACF meta field types, things like repeater regions, etc. So if that's a key part of your next project, well Bricks probably isn't there for you just yet. Thankfully though, not every project requires these more advanced field types. First up on the agenda, we're going to head over to CPT UI to create our custom post type. So let's head over and into add edit custom post type. I'm going to call this jobs, plural label of jobs and singular of job. We're going to leave all the additional labels. We're going to let them to just use the default values inside there. Next up, we're going to come into the setting section and just tweak a few things inside here. So first of all, we're going to make sure that this has an archive. Otherwise, we have a problem there. We won't be able to see anything. Uh, we're going to set this to hierarchical more just because it makes it an easier way to work inside the editor of WordPress itself. And if you want to come down and set menu icons and position, you can do that. I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to say add post type and there's our new jobs post type. Next up, we're going to create a taxonomy. So head over into add taxonomy and we're going to call this job type. And this is just where we're going to create that basic information. So job types for plural, job type for singular, and we're going to assign this to work with the jobs post type we just created. We're going to pop down to the bottom to our settings section and make sure that everything is configured here as well. So hierarchical, we're going to set to be true. Again, more from a usability point of view than from any feature that we need. Uh, we're going to come down and say show in admin column because this just makes it easier to organize things and to set it inside the quick and bulk edit panel. Once we've done that, we can say add taxonomy and that's our taxonomy created. If we take a look now on the left hand side, we have our jobs and we also have our job type. So let's just hop into job type and let's add a few job types inside here. We're going to keep this really simple and just have full time, part time and temporary. But you could add as many as you wanted to inside here and organize things in any way you want. Next, we need to create the meta fields that are going to associate with our jobs post type. To do that, we're going to hop into custom fields and open up add new. We're going to give this a title of job custom fields and we're going to make sure that the location is set post type is equal to job which is our new custom post type everything else could be left as it is and we're now ready to add in those additional fields now this is a really simple example and normally if you're creating something like a job listing website you would have a lot more information inside you but the process is just repeating what i'm going to show you so i want to keep this pretty simple let's add a new field and this is going to be for our salary so annual salary we're going to set this to be a number. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to set this to be required because you're going to need to put a value inside there. I'm going to add a new field and this second field is going to be our contract term. Again, we're going to set this to be a number required. Yes. And then we're going to come down and add a third and final field, which is just going to be our employer. So this is where you're going to put in your employer's details and the text is perfectly fine for this. Before I wrap this up, I just want to quickly make one more change. We'll be coming back to the contract term. We want this to be based on months. So it's going to make sense that if we put append 
we put months inside there so anybody that puts values in will know and we're going to set a step size of one so that's everything in place now it's worth bearing in mind if you are new to working with custom fields and working with acf and working with custom post types when you create a custom post type by default you'll normally have three key fields fields the title the content and the featured image. So everything that we create inside advanced custom fields is added on top of those three key fields. Now this video isn't about working with ACF and custom post types, but if you want to learn more about getting started with that, check out the links in the description. They're gonna give you some really key information. Okay, so once we've done that, we're simply gonna come up to the top and we're gonna just set the option to publish this. So we've now created our custom post type and created some custom fields. So if we come over into the jobs and we go into add new, we'll see that we have those normal key three fields. We've got the title, the content, and the featured image on the right hand side. We have our three custom fields underneath and we also have our custom post type taxonomy for full-time, part-time, and temporary. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of filler jobs inside here so we've got some data to work with when we take a look at working with Bricks Builder. So just to quickly demonstrate, here's our first job role. It's a product designer, there's some information about it, it's a full-time role, set the featured image, and as you can see, all the other data is now inserted underneath. So we'll publish this, and once that's published, if we hop back out of here, we'll see there's our first listing, there's our taxonomy for full time, and if we edit this with the quick edit option, you'll see we can set the job type, we can also set up any other values we create inside here, and we set those to be part of this quick edit option. Just makes the process a lot easier for the end user. Now archive listings are pretty easy to build in Bricks and with the ability to easily add in almost any type of data directly into the post widget itself, we can easily build more informative listings. It's not as solid as using a dedicated loop building tool like we have with Jet Engine or Elementor Custom Skin, but it still gets us around 90% of the way there. Let's go into the Bricks Builder and we're gonna choose templates. From there, we can create our template for our archive. So we're gonna add new, and we're just gonna call this job archive template. Choose the template type on the right-hand side and set that to be archive, and then we're gonna simply save our draft and then start editing this with bricks. So once the bricks builder is open, we could start to build things out. So the first thing we want to do is add a container to hold the layout for our new archive. So we're gonna add a container, when you do that, we have the container on the right hand side. So now we can select that if we want to, and we can make any kind of edits we want on there. So first things first, let's just give this a little bit of breathing space. So we'll come over to style, choose layout, and inside there, we're gonna put some space in above and below. So that gives us a bit of breathing space. So now we can just drop a title in, and we're just gonna put in a normal heading, drop that inside there. And you can see that now shows us in the stack on the right hand side. And we're gonna change this from I'm a heading to something that makes a little bit more sense. And then we're ready to drop in the posts widget. So we're gonna come over to the left hand side and we're just simply going to add elements and do a search for posts. And we're gonna add that in. Now, if you wanted to, you can easily pin this to the top. So if this is something you use a lot, you can pin it and that'll now be at the top for your pinned elements. Another one of those really kind of cool little features you have inside Bricks Builder. Let's drag that over, position that into our stacking order. If it's in the wrong place, we can just rearrange that on the right hand side. So currently it's telling us there's no posts found. So we need to go ahead and set this up. So we'll select it. If we want to rename this, you can rename anything inside you. So we can just say latest posts, for example, and we can just type in what we want. Makes the naming of this so much easier. So with that selected, come over to the content side of things, and this is where all our controls are. So the first thing we want to do is obviously tell it where we want to get the info from. So we're going to open up the posts, and we're going to set the post type to our custom post type of jobs. That will then pull in our jobs. And you can see, there they all are. So now we've got control over how we include things, exclude things, any terms we want to use, all those kinds of useful pieces of information. So you can set this up as you see fit if you need to make changes. For this example, we're going to leave it as it is. Now, while Bricks doesn't give us the ability to create a totally custom loop layout just yet, fingers crossed this is in the pipeline, it does still give us a lot of control over the key elements. So if we just close this down on the right hand side, just gives a bit more room. You can see we've pulled in three key pieces of information, the featured image for the job, the title of the job, and also a very brief description of the content. And that's great, but we want more. So how do we go about it? Well, let's close this posts down and we'll come back to worrying about styling a little later. We're gonna come into fields and this shows us the different elements that we currently have. So our title and our excerpt. 
these are these two pieces of information. And if we click to expand those out, we can change the HTML tag, the dynamic data source, add margins, pad in, color, all the styling options you would want. Not gonna worry about that right now. But what we wanna do is start adding in some of our custom fields, things that would be useful to someone. So let's add a custom field, and you can see this pulls in what it considers is the right thing, which by default is the title of the post. So we can just select that and delete it. And now we can type anything we want inside there, and we can also use the little lightning bolt to select dynamic data from here. So let's kick it off by adding the salary, one of the key things people want to know about. We'll click, and there's all the information to do with the posts and so on, which is great, but we can skip past all of that and all of this really useful information right the way down to the bottom, and we'll get to the ACF fields. Now we can just choose annual salary, select that, and there's our annual salary. But nobody really knows what that means. So we can just come back into this section and we can just start typing in. And this will add on to what's already there. So let's just put salary and we'll put the currency symbol that we're working with and we'll just put afterwards per year. And you can see now that updates in real time and shows us exactly what we have inside there. We can change this from H3 and we'll set it to be just an ordinary paragraph. And if we want to, we can use HTML inside here as well. So let's just say we want to make the salary section bold. So we'll just say strong on there and we'll come over to just before the pound sign and we'll just close that out. And you can see that now makes it in bold. You want to change the color on there? You can easily just come down to the typography and inside there we can choose the text color. So let's just say we'll set this to be a nice red color to make it stand out a little bit. And if you want to change the typography, font size, font weight, all those kinds of things, you can do that inside there as well. So you have full control over how all these different things are going to be set up and working. So we can repeat this process now and add in the additional fields that I've created that are part of ACF using exactly the same way of working. So let's just close this down. We'll come back up, close this down as well. And what we could do is we could duplicate this if we wanted to. So we can make a clone so we have a head start. Or we can just click on add a field again. And again, we can take out the information that's in there. And we're just going to put in contract duration, colon. And we'll just grab in that data. Scroll down to the bottom, contract term. And we'll just go to the end of this as well. And we'll just put in months. Set that to be paragraph and you can see that updates things. And now obviously what you can do is you can take out any margins and padding and stuff to make sure that everything sits nice and neat and close together so it doesn't look a little bit squashed up. So I'll do the same thing on there and the same on there. And then I can tweak that if I need to just to give it a little bit of breathing space. We might say we want to put a little bit of space in above and below. Well, we can do exactly that. So I'm going to add the, the last one in now for the employer and then we'll move on to setting up some styling and some other things we can do. There we go, with a little bit of tweaking, you can see we've now set everything up inside this. So now I can go ahead and fine tune the overall layout. So for example, let's go to posts. We've already set everything up inside there. We don't want to include or exclude anything. If we come to layout option, this is where we can choose how we want to lay things out. Now, you've got a choice of four different options and each one has slightly different layout options. We're gonna leave this set as grid, but I would experiment with those if you want to play around with some different layouts. We can then set the number of columns. We're gonna set this to be three. And we can just go ahead then and just apply a little bit of styling to the image itself. So we can come into our image and inside here we can now set up whether we want this image to be clickable, which generally I would suggest you'd want to with a listing. And you can see we can enable this and disable it if we want to. So pretty cool. You can also then adjust the image ratio and those kinds of things. So you can see we can set this to square 16 by 9, 4 by 3 and so on. So we set it to square, you can see that tidies everything up. And if you want to control the width, you can do that inside here as well. So pretty cool to see. And also we can come down and choose the image size, the source image, so we can make sure that we're not loading in massive images when we only want to display something quite small on the page itself. Now for our example, we're not worrying about filtering anything out, but if you wanted to, you can come down to the filter option and you can set up to filter this based upon various different things, categories, tags, so on. So we could say job types, we could filter this and we could just filter it based upon the job type we want. So pretty cool to see you've got that inside there. We're not gonna worry about that in this example though. And navigation then just allows us to put in kind of pagination and so on. So you can set that up any way you like, styling, all those kinds of things. Now it's worth bearing in mind as well that I haven't really set up any global styling. That's something that you would set up in the same way that if you're using any kind of page build that has this option. So you'd have that consistency throughout. All those tools and features are there for you when you want to use them. Now speaking of styling, let's just hop over and apply just a really quick styling option to ours. So we're gonna come into our border and box shadows. We're gonna drop a border inside there. We're going to choose a color and we'll set this to something really light like this very pale gray option and what we'll do is we'll set the style to be solid 
and we'll put a border radius of eight. And you can see that puts that inside there for us. And then we can just adjust the width and everything. So let's just set this to one pixel and link all those together. And you can see everything is now laid out nice and neat. That really is the basis of creating the layout for this. We've created the option to drop in our different jobs. So the next thing we need to do is just set this up to work with the particular archive that it needs to work with. Now to do that, we simply come over to the settings option and inside the settings option, we have the option for template settings. So we open that up and inside there, we've got conditions and populate content. So if you are creating a template and you don't see the content you want, this is where you'd use this option and choose what type of content you want to use as the sort of filler text, the filler content when you're designing things. What we're interested in is the conditions. Now, at the moment, we have no conditions set up and we can stack conditions in the same way you could do with tools like Elemental Pro. So we're going to click on add condition and we're going to select this first of all. So we're going to choose any kind of different location part of the site and so on. So if you want to tie the entire website for a header or a footer or something, you can do that. Tie it in just the front page, those kinds of things. We want to set this to be an archive template. And then that opens up the second option is, well, where do you want to associate this? We're going to click on there. We're going to choose our post types. And then we're going to have a third option. And we can choose what post type we want to associate with, which is our custom post type of jobs. Job done. Pardon the pun. Now, at the moment, what this will do with this condition we set up is we'll use this particular archive template only for the root post type of jobs. When we kind of drill down into like full time, part time and temporary and so on, it will default back to the normal WordPress template, which is not what we want. So we can add a second condition in and our second condition is again going to be using for archives. We'll select archive from there. This time we're going to change this to categories and tags. So we're going to choose that option. And then the third option, we can choose what archive terms we want to use. We'll select that and you can see we've got all terms for job types which allows us then to use it and group all those together. But if you wanted to have different layers for different ones, you could do that. But let's just say we'll set this to all terms, job types, and that's our two conditions set up. And our template is now set up to work with both of those types of archives. Now that's set up, let's just update the navigation to allow us to navigate around a site and test things out. So we'll hop back out of Bricks Builder and we'll go into our appearance and into menus. And from there, we're just going to add some extra things in. So we've got different options for job types and we'll say view all and we'll select all of those and add those to our menu. We also need to add in the ability to see all of the jobs, the just default archive. Now to do that, it's a little bit different, but it's also really, really easy. What we're going to do is we're going to hop over into our custom post type UI. We're going to open up our post types. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. Inside there, we're going to just edit an existing post type, which is our jobs. If we take a look, there's our post type slug. That's what we set up at the beginning, jobs. So all we need to do is hop back into our menu structure. We're going to add a custom link. And inside there, we're going to put in the custom link for that. We're going to keep this really simple. We're going to do forward slash jobs forward slash. And we're just going to say all jobs. And we'll add that to the menu and we'll position that a little higher up. Now you could organize this in any way you want. I just want to show you how easy it is to actually create this. And I know it's something that causes confusion for some people. Let's hit save menu on there. And then we'll do is we'll just hop over and take a look on our test site. So we're on the home page, which has nothing on there at the moment. And we'll say all jobs and we we'll click and there's all of our jobs, three in this example, but you can see they're all inside there. We click on full time. You'll see we're using the same template with the second condition we set up. And you see there's our senior app coder and so on. We come to temporary. You can see there's our head chef. And if you go to part time where there's nothing, there's nothing found inside there. Now, moving on to the next template in our list, the single post template is pretty easy to build. And if you're familiar with building them in tools like Elementor, this is going to feel incredibly familiar. Let's just head over to the bricks section and into templates again. And inside there, we're going to add a new template and we're just going to call this single post template or job single template. Again, template type, we set this to be single and we'll just hit publish on there. And then we can open this up and start editing with bricks. Now, if you've ever used anything like Elementor, Elementor Pro, and you've created templates, this is going to feel very, very familiar. This works in a very similar fashion. First things first, though, let's go ahead and add in that container like we've done before. Select the container and just put a little bit of space above and below. So 50 above. Next up, we can just come back in and add elements. Now, you can see there's 
already a selection of 10 different options we can use that are specific to the single post template. Let's start off by adding in the post title, which is going to be the name of the role. And you can see that pulls in single template, which makes no real difference. It doesn't make sense. So how do we deal with that and actually get some data inside you? Well, if you remember back to the archive thing, I said, go into settings, come into your template settings, populate content, and we can choose the content type, which is going to be single post page. And then we're going to just choose an option. So we'll say product designer. We'll have a list of all different kinds of posts and things inside you. We'll hit apply preview. And you'll see that will then reload the template with the new information being used to populate the template itself. So there's our product designer. Now makes a little bit more sense. Next up, we want to drop in the image that's going to be associated with this. Now we can't use these single widgets. It's not actually available inside this. So we're going to come down to the image option. We'll pop that into our design and we'll just select it. And from there, we're going to just choose select dynamic data. We'll choose that and just pull in the featured image as simple as that. You can see that drops the image inside there. We can set things up to do with what size image we want to use, those kinds of things. Custom alt text if you want to override the default alt text and you can stretch it and do things. We don't want to link this to anything. It wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. So we'll say there's our featured image. That's all perfectly fine. So now we can go ahead and start adding in more information. So let's come underneath. We'll hop back to our elements and we can start to use anything from here. So the first thing we want to do is probably pull in the actual content itself. So we'll just say post content, drop that underneath, and you can see that inserts the content. Let's make a little bit of space around that. So we'll select it, come into our style, and we're just going to go into our layout, and we're just going to add a bit of padding around this, say 50 pixels all the way around, just to give us a little bit of breathing space. Now, this isn't a design tutorial. This is a function tutorial. Design it however you see fit. So we've got the basic key pieces of information in there, but now we can start to pull in some more dynamic information. So how do we do that? Come back to our elements and then we can just pull in what we want to use. So we'll say for this example, we just want to grab some text. So we'll drop that inside there. You can see we can reorder this if we want to. So we can say we want to put the post content above the text or vice versa, however you want to set things up. And then you can apply any styling you want. Let's just select our text, come back to our content, and you can see this gives us the normal sort of text editor you'd expect to see anywhere in WordPress. We can just take that out of there and we can now pull in what we want. So we're gonna say this is gonna be the salary. So we put salary and we'll put our pound sign in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the little dynamic data option to pull in exactly what we want. And you can see this now breaks things down into the various different types of data we can pull in. So we wanna grab the annual salary drop that inside there. And then if you want to style this, you can do that. You can just pull in what type, whether it's a hero or lead. You want to apply specific styling, which is pulled in from the global styles of this particular setup. You can do that, or you can just style it directly inside the editor. I'm just going to quickly go ahead, repeat this exact same process for the other dynamic fields we've got inside there and apply a little bit of basic styling. So you don't have to watch me doing all of that. So there's our additional bits of information, the duration, the employer, and so on. So that's the basics of this setup. Final thing I want to do is add another section at the bottom, which we're going to have related roles. This just means that people can navigate around in a nice, friendly, simple fashion. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our elements. We're going to add a new container in, making sure that sits outside our main container. So this is sitting underneath everything. And what we can do is now we can just grab and pull in related posts. So we can just drag and drop that into our design. We'll just make sure that's in the right place, sitting inside our container, and there we go. So now we can select that and we can configure exactly how this all works. Let's come back to our content, and inside there we've got a query option. So we can pull up and open up our query side of things, and from there we can now set this up for how exactly we want it to work. So the number of posts, the order, the random, and so on, and the common taxonomy. So we can get rid of those, take everything out from there, and we'll set this up to be job types. And inside there, you can see that will now pull in the different job types. We can also come in and adjust the fields. So we can just come in here and we can add extra fields in if we wanted to. So if we want to add in any of our dynamic fields, we can do that to match what we have on the front page, which is probably what you would want to do. You can come in and you can adjust the image, turn it on and off if you want to, all those kinds of good things. I'm going to set the layout on this to be the option of three per row, like we've done with everything else. I'm also going to add a little bit of space in around this to make sure it lines up nice and tidy with the rest of things. So again, into layout, and from there, we're just going to add in some margins. So we'll put on the left and right, 50. 
just everything ties in and lines up nicely. So like I say, I would go ahead and add in some extra dynamic fields using exactly the same method we saw earlier on. Simply coming into the content, going into the fields option, add a new item, and then link that up to our dynamic content. Again, I don't want to bore you with this. You've already seen how to do it, just repeating the same thing. Now the final thing we need to do with this template is tell it where to be used. So again, we'll go to the settings option at the top, come into our template settings, into conditions, and add our condition in. And our condition is going to be post type, and just choose jobs from that list. That's it, that's all we need to worry about. We can now save this, and we've now created the template to list our jobs. Okay, so we're back over onto the front end at the test site. Let's take a look. We're gonna open up one of these jobs we've already created, and if we take a look inside there, there's our new template. Like I say, it doesn't look particularly sexy, but it does its job. So there's all the details. You can see there's the related posts underneath, which obviously would make sense if we dropped in a title saying related jobs. But you can see how everything works inside you. If we go to something that only has one job, for example, go to temporary, there's our head chef. Scroll down, we get no related jobs because we only have a couple of jobs and nothing else inside this category. So everything is working the way it needs to work. Now the last piece of our puzzle is the ability to search and filter our new post type. For this, I'll be testing out Search and Filter Pro to see if it will work. Quick disclaimer, I haven't really tested this out, so I have no idea how well it will work or if it'll work at all. Now before we go any further, there are some slight quirks when you're working with Search and Filter Pro, but version three is being worked upon, and hopefully this will be something that'll iron out these little kinks and just make the whole process just a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so I'm back into my templates and we're gonna open up the archive template with bricks, and we're gonna add in just a little bit of space to give us the ability to drop in our filters. Let's add some containers in now so we can make sure everything lays out correctly. So we'll add two containers in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this, position that there, and we're gonna grab this and position that like so. And then we're gonna grab this and put this into the right hand section. And we're just gonna do a search for short codes to put into the left hand section. Section. So we'll drag and drop that into our design, and there we go. So what we now have is basically a two column layout. We just need to make sure that everything is laid out correctly. So we'll grab this first section, and we're gonna come over, and we're just gonna make sure that everything is laid out the way we want. Into style, into layout, and inside there, we're gonna set the width to be 25%. There we go. And we'll do the same thing then for the second container. We'll select that into style, and we're gonna come in and set our width to be 75%. And there we go. So now everything is in order. We just need to make sure that everything is set to stack correctly. So we'll grab our first container. And what we're gonna do is come into content, stack these horizontally, and there you go. And now if we want to, we can apply some column gaps. We'll just do 30 pixels of column gap, and there's our layout. So if we just collapse this down a little bit, you can see this is kind of what we're working with. So that's our template almost ready. Let's just save those changes, and then we're gonna hop over into Search and Filter Pro. Now, if you're new to Search and Filter Pro, I've got a dedicated video that'll show you how to get more out of it than this is gonna cover, but let me just quickly run through what we need to set up. We're gonna add our new Search and Filter, and we're just gonna call this Main Filter. And then we can see we've got all the different options underneath. First thing we need to do is just tell it exactly where we want to filter. We don't want posts and pages, we just want our jobs custom post type. Then we can choose with the number of results we want on the page, how we want to deal with the relationships, whether we want to set it to and or or and so on. And we're just gonna set this to work with both post categories and tags and categories and taxonomies and so on. Heading over into the display results, this is the kind of key part to getting this to all work correctly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to be using a post type archive, and we're gonna enable the option to enable filtering on taxonomy archives. This means that it'll work across the way that we set things up. For this example though, we're gonna disable the Ajax. The reason for this is, the filter works, but for some reason, the images don't display the thumbnail images. So this is something to bear in mind. However, the same, it still works with the filter inside of things. Just if we enable Ajax, we get that kind of quirky problem. So with that being done, the next thing we can do then is go through the different available fields. I'm gonna keep this really simple just to show you how to get it working, but you can get more complex if you want to. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the option for filtering these based upon the taxonomy. And the way that Search and Filter Pro works is you can stack more than one filter type or field types from this selection, and then you can customize this to have more complex or comprehensive filtering. The process is basically exactly the same as I'm going to show you right now. You just stacking more on top of each other. So with this being done, we can filter now based upon the type of job. So we need to change the taxonomy over to job types, which is our custom post type. We're going to change the input type to be checkbox, but you could use any of the options available. And we're going to drop in a title for this, and we're just going to say job types, and you can choose the search operator. Then we've got how we want to display things. So we want to display count, in other words, the number of positions inside each of those different job types. You can leave that if you want to. We're going to set this to hierarchical because that's how we've set up our custom post type, and we're going to include children in parents. Again, you can set this up how you want to. You might want to configure this completely differently to what I want. And that's basically all we really need to do. We don't need to worry about the rest of these options. We're going to hit publish. And that's the basics of our filter set up. So we just need to grab the short code. We're going to copy that from there. And we're going to head back over into our listing, our template. So back into bricks and into templates. And inside there, we're going to open up our archive. We're going to edit that with bricks. And this is where we can now drop in the short code. So we'll select the short code option on the right hand side and drop our short code inside there. And if everything's configured, you can see that now shows everything up, including the count. So we can see that it's pulling in the relevant data. Everything is cached and pulled in correctly. Now, while it looks a little bit ugly when we take a look at this, everything is fully stylable inside Search and Filter Pro. Check out the documentation. It'll give you information on exactly how you can configure this, the CSS classes that are associated with it, all those kinds of things. So getting up and running should be perfectly fine and dandy. Now then, if we hit save on there, we can take a look now at how this all works. We'll refresh our page and we'll see there's our filter set up on the left-hand side. So now if we select these, you can see that starts to filter things out. So we can see full time, there's our two roles. We can uncheck that, choose temporary, and that'll show us the temporary role, or we can choose part time, for example, and that will show us the part time, which we have none. But you can stack these on top of each other. So you can say, I want to look at full time, and I want to look at temporary. And that will show you, in this example, all three of our records. But you can see it all works out really easy. Now, if you want to learn more about working with Bricks Builder, check out these videos next. And if you found this video useful, well, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. It really does help me out. However, if you didn't find value with this video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. So let's take ACF and custom post type UI and create a really simple post type for the use of this basis of the... So let's take ACF and custom post type UI and create a really simple post type for use as the basis of our list. Oh, for God's sake. Why is everybody's car so friggin' noisy today? So for this part, let's take ACF and custom post type UI and create a really simple post type and use that as the basis of our listing. Now, it is worth noting that this most current version of... Uh, take four. It's not as solid as using a dedicated loop building tool like we have in Jet Engine or Elements or Custom Skin, but it still gets us around 90 Oh, f why can't I speak today? Archive listing, take two.